All right, fantastic. We are recording. So if at any point you do want to go back, listen to the information, recap anything, you have that there. I will send an email out to everybody afterwards with a copy of the recording too, so that you have it handy. So welcome, 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 everyone. It's great to see a handful of folks on here. Many names I recognize, many that are new. So glad to have you all here. Uh, we did have about 300 people register for the session today. And uh, for those who are not able to join, we will be sending a copy of the recording, as I mentioned. So today's topic is one of my favorites. We're gonna be talking about the country of Belize. This presentation is really geared to be a very high level general information session. Uh, we are going to have future sessions for future workshops that really break down to the different districts, to the different topics like residency, what the titling process looks like, all of that. So you'll get invitations to join us for that. But I'm gonna guess this will be about an hour, maybe about 40 minutes of me talking and then we'll open up the floor to questions and answers. So, all right, let's just jump right in. So hello everyone, once again, my name is Rachel Jensen. I am on the board of the Belize National Association of Real Estate and I'm also an owner of a real estate brokerage here called Luna Realty Belize. Some of you I know know me from uh, my previous position as the VP of Sales and Marketing with a development company here in the region. Uh, I have since branched out and started my own brokerage here. You will see some of those properties featured though in some of the opportunity sections. Uh, it's a great project that they have there and I'm excited for folks to get to see them. So my story is I started uh, living in the region about 10 years ago, originally from New York, made my way down to Central America in 2012 originally living in Nicaragua. I was working as an intern with the development company. And in the end of 2012, I started coming to Belize more often as I was starting to build a team down here. And little by little, I started to realize that my trips down to Belize were becoming more frequent and were becoming longer. And what I realized when I was down here is that it really just felt like I was home. I was in a place that was comfortable. I met many friends over the times that I was coming down. Even though I wasn't living here, I started to see people over and over again. And with English being the official language of the country, it was easy for me or it felt easier for me uh, compared to when I was living in Nicaragua to get in integrated into what was going on here in the community. So today I do call Ambergris Key home. And if you can follow my cursor, look at the right hand side of the screen. If you follow my cursor, that is where Ambergris Key is located. So that's where I'm calling in from today. Uh, sun is just about set over here on, uh, on the island. And for me, I know what was important when I was going through that expat process was finding a place that I felt comfortable in and finding a place that really catered to my lifestyle and what I enjoyed doing. And I'm a very adventurous person. I enjoy being around folks who are like-minded. And I also really enjoy spending time with my dogs and, and with, with family or friends. And for me coming to Belize, I realized I found that fairly instantly when I was here on Ambergris Key. Now, everybody has different interests. You may not necessarily like skydiving or diving generally or snorkeling or being around the water. You may be somebody who'd rather be in the jungle or perhaps the rivers have close by or perhaps hiking. Maybe you prefer those sort of activities. And so when you are exploring where it is that you want to spend time, you know, really understand what it is that you enjoy doing, right? What is, what is the thing that you like to do on the weekend or if something you like to do every day? And here in Belize, what's pretty neat is that even if we don't necessarily have, let's say, uh, a knitting club or a book club, you can find other folks who are interested in that and then get it started. And I think because English is the official language, it's pretty easy here to find people who are like-minded. So for me, I ended up on Ambergris Key because there were things to do that I enjoyed doing. Also, um, the picture there on the bottom left is with the Belize National Association of Real Estate, our president and our secretary. And it was just really neat to have that sort of community uh, with you know other Belizeans as well, with with locals here in the country to learn from them, understand their process, and then also to help make our real estate process here better and smoother. All right, so I'm going to put up a poll on the screen, and our first question here. There's going to be three questions here, but I'm going to launch this and have you answer them for me, just so I have an understanding of who here is on the webinar with us. Have you been to Belize yet? Yes, no, not yet, but I'm coming soon. I'll give you about five, 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, perfect. And I'm gonna end the poll and I'll, I'll share the results with you as well. So it looks like about 42% of the folks on the line have been to Belize, which is awesome. I'm really happy to see that. 38% haven't, 19% haven't either, but they are planning to come soon. Awesome. I think, you know, you'll hear me talk a lot about Belize. I'm gonna be sharing a lot of resources and information with you. I have found that one of the best ways 
to understand and feel if a country is right is to come down and visit. And for those of you who haven't been down yet, maybe you don't have a trip on your radar, um, please do plan to come down and, and visit the country when you have a chance, especially if this is a place where you are looking to relocate to. All right, so we're going to start here and here's a quick overview of our agenda. We're gonna go through what the Belize market looks like. For a few of you, I know that this is a place that you've already owned real estate before, so you're probably familiar with it, but there are some things that may be new to you as well. Then we're gonna go through five Belize market myths and then six top spots to explore and then we'll go through a Q&A. So I, I believe I'll be speaking for about 40 minutes and then from there we'll open up the floor to the Q&A. As you have any questions that pop up during the session, feel free, feel free to find that Q&A section or the chat section there and type in your questions and we'll get those answered for you at the end. All right, so just a quick overview about Belize. If you're not too sure where we're located, we're nestled in between Guatemala and Mexico. Small, small country about the size of Massachusetts. It's actually the second smallest country in the region, but population wise, it's by far the smallest population at about 400,000 people. I mentioned to you before that English is the official language of the country. You will still hear Creole spoken. A lot of Spanish is spoken as well. Sometimes you hear spe people speaking all three languages in the same sentence, which is pretty neat, but do know that if you're somebody who struggles with learning another language, this may be a right, the right spot for you if you're looking to relocate. The GDP is about 1.76 million. Um, it's you know not really too high, but it is a small country here. And then we are on the Belize dollar currency. It's pegged to the US dollar, two Belize dollars to one US dollar. So when you find yourself here, you're in the grocery store. Assume by the way, everything is in Belize dollars. When you go to the cash register, they tell you it's $3 for your, your Coke. Then from there, you're able to give them a dollar 50 US. They do accept US dollars as well. So just something to bear in mind. Um, I do want to correct one thing I just said, though. Assume things are in Belize dollars, unless we're talking about real estate. So all the prices that you see here are going to be in U.S. dollars. Typically, when transactions are done between foreigners, they are done in U.S. dollars. With the Belizeans, if you're Belizean selling property or Belizean buying, that interaction there would be done in Belize dollars. So unfortunately, when you see the prices on the screen, don't cut those in half. Those are at U.S. dollars. All right, so I just mentioned a couple of these fun facts too. We gained our independence in 1981. Tomorrow actually is going to be the 41st birthday of Belize. So it's still a very, very young country. I mentioned to you that we're the second smallest country in the region. And then also one of the big reasons why Belize has really started to gain more popularity is because we have the second largest reef or the second largest reef, it's the first living, first largest, um, second largest reef, but it's the first, reef that is the living. Uh, the, set, the barrier reef is actually um, dying quite quickly. And so the barrier reef here is the largest living reef in the world. So a uh, living reef. So it's always important to know that part too. All right. So let's just talk a little bit more about the Belize market. So we are seeing incredible amounts of sales. I can tell you uh, in 2020, when the rest of the world, when the entire world shut down, really, I remember thinking to myself, who in the world is going to be buying real estate when they can't come down and visit in person? Uh, the market at that point exploded like it did in many other parts of the world. People were buying left and right, holding on to properties that they had. Here in Belize, it's typically a cash market. So a lot of the buyers are coming down with cash. They didn't have a mortgage. There weren't really the foreclosures that some people expected. But because of that, we are seeing a ton of sales continuing now as well um, because we're not really affected by the interest rates that we're seeing hike up around the world. Um, with English being the official language and with it being really beautiful year round, it is a tropical climate here. We are at about 85 degrees year round. Uh, there is quite a bit of humidity, but you do have the beautiful blue waters and the Caribbean waters. Um, and, but overall, it's a really a slower, more relaxed pace of life. And I think for a lot of people, especially those who are looking to relocate, that's something that we're really looking for in life, especially if you have been somebody who's been working for a really long time and you just want to be able to sit back on a beach, relax, and not really worry about much. But overall, there really are three different groups of buyers who are buying here in the country. Uh, we do have the group who's coming down to relocate. So typically they do wanna continue working. Maybe they're looking to buy an established business or perhaps they're looking to start a business here in Belize, which you are able to do as a foreigner. You are able to open a business or to buy an existing business. We also have a group of investors. So the people who are looking at opportunities here in the country to invest, perhaps they wanna land bank. Real estate taxes here, property taxes are really, really low. It's 1% uh, 
of the unimproved land. So unimproved land, it doesn't matter what's built on top of it. And so as a result, people find it really affordable to have land and just hold on to. And then they're also seeing that the increase in tourism means there's a rental income coming in. And then we have the retirees, people who just want to come down and be fully retired. And perhaps they don't want to work anymore. They just want to be able to kick back on the beach and, and read that book. So a couple of benefits for you here in the real estate market. One is that locals and foreigners, you do receive title to your property. Uh, I know there are a couple of folks I was talking to and they mentioned Mexico. They didn't really feel too comfortable in Mexico on the coast because they weren't able to get title. They got the bank trust, but they really wanted title to their property. They know that once they had it, they had it for life. In addition, I just mentioned this to you, but property taxes are low. I'm going to repeat what I said on the slide before because it is pretty important. Property taxes here are assessed on the unimproved land, 1% of the unimproved land. It doesn't matter what's built on top of it. They don't look at your paperwork when you purchase property and say, all right, they, they, they pay $300,000 for a property. We're going to charge 1% of that. No, it's 1% of the unimproved land. So basically the ground that's there. There's also zero capital gains tax in Belize. So if today you buy a property for 300,000, a few years you sell it for 400,000. Here in Belize, you pay 0% on that $100,000 gain. Also, I don't know where uh, what the, the taxes are like in your home country. So do make sure you're checking with your accountant when that does happen. Uh, and then there's also a stable government here because it is a British Commonwealth. A lot of the times we feel more comfortable with that. We're able to go through the paperwork. We know what it says. We don't need to try to translate everything. And, uh, and it makes it a lot more comfortable for us as we're going through that process. And so as Belize becomes more popular, you know, this is probably common sense and you probably understand it, but as a country or a place becomes more popular, more people come and as a result, the real estate prices increase. So I've been in Belize or coming to Belize since 2012, 2016 is really when I moved here full time. Um, but even since then over that 10 year period, uh, you know, just last night it was, I was driving home and I live north on the island about 20, 25 minutes from town. And there was a, I went on a, on a, a trip up to Seagrip Beach at that point in 2014 with a realtor. And he's like, this island, this part of the island is gonna be really popular in 10 years. And I remember we were weaving in and out of roads and on the beach for part of it as we're driving up in our golf cart, then we're back in the middle of what felt like the jungle, then we're back on the beach. And so last night as we were driving up this road, which is you know, graded and now you have a left that goes to Seagrip Beach and it's you know, a lot more identifiable as a road. You know, I realized that it really was, it was only about eight years, which in the grand scheme of th things isn't that long of a time, but for this road to go up and for it to become a lot more accessible. Secret Beach since then has blown up. It's become a lot more popular of an area. And so it was just interesting to see even over that eight year period, how much growth there has been in this country. And I remember when I first moved down to Belize and or first came here in 2012, and I was telling my friends and family, I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. It looks so beautiful. Personally, I actually had no idea where Belize was. I had to go on a map and then go to Google Images and look it up. And then I started telling my friends and family about it. They also had no idea where it was. And then I think it was about 2015, 16, 17, where it all started to click for them. Like, oh, Belize, we heard about Belize. We you know, saw it in an advertisement. We saw it in the airport on those big billboards or whatever the case may be. And so now we're seeing as more and more people are discovering it, there is a lot of uh, price increase as well. All right, so we're going to jump into the market myths. The first one here is the cost of real estate. And, you know, a lot of times when I'm chatting with folks, I'll ask them what it is that they're looking for. And I really appreciate the people who, you know, have an idea of what you're looking for, because then it's easier for us to try to find opportunities for you. But I also understand sometimes we have no idea what we want, but we know we just want to get out of Dodge and go to go to the beach or something along those lines. But, um, you know, I wanted to show you this example here, because while... Belize is a developing country, right? It's not as expensive as Bermuda or Bahamas or countries that are really developed in the tourism market. It's still a developing country. So I'd say that land is generally going to be more affordable than it would be in California or, or Florida, for example, or even Bahamas, but it may not be as cheap as you think that it may be. So this is an example of a two bedroom, two bath or two bedroom, one bath house that just sold for about 550,000. Um, there's actually quite a bit of work that needed to be done on it. It is on the beach and it is about a half an acre that it's on. And this is about 20 minutes from town. It's actually just right up the beach from us. And so, you know, I, I sometimes like, yep, we want a beautiful beach house and we, we want to have an acre of land or something like that. And we, here's a hundred thousand dollars. What can we get? So there are still opportunities, except however, I would recommend just be willing to be a little bit of flexible, be, be willing to be a little flexible. Well, you may not necessarily be able to be 
reef fronts, right? Looking out at the at the reef and the Caribbean, you may be able to still have that water view and be overlooking a canal, for example, or and it has a sunset, or looking over the lagoon, for example. So do understand that. Do try to be a little bit flexible with your plans too. You can still get that water view and not necessarily have those Caribbean coastline premiums. For those of you who are looking to relocate here, I do have a list of estimated living expenses. If you'd like to take a look at that, it is on the, on the website under the, the blog section. Um, so it's resources and then blog, then you'll find the cost of living chart. I just put that together last month in August. So you're able to see what things cost just about, but understand that it may be less expensive than North America, but I wouldn't really necessarily call it cheap. And the, the one thing I will say with that though too, is that it also depends where in the country you're looking. You know, you may be looking on Ambergris Key, which is the most popular place in the country, or you may be willing to go outside of the, the tourist zones and be willing to land bank for a little bit and hold on to the property and wait for it to appreciate in value. Um, I really appreciate the folks who reached out beforehand and, and gave me an idea of some of the questions that were on their mind. I have integrated those into the session here. So thank you for, for that. I know a couple of the questions that came up was what is the general price per square foot? So this goes along the line of that debunking that first myth, which is the real estate cost. It is really, really difficult to give you an exact answer or to say it's $100 a square foot, $150 a square foot. There are so many factors that are considered in this. So for example, tiny homes. I know tiny homes have been really, really trendy and you know they're typically at least three, four, 500 square feet. Now, when you look at a tiny home, it's compact in size, but it has all those essentials that really bring up the cost when you're building a home that's larger. So it has all the kitchen appliances, it has the bathrooms. And so maybe it also has solar panels, right? Solar panels cost 20, 30, 40 grand each. You also have maybe reverse osmosis systems or water catchment systems. So you do have a higher, square, uh, higher price per square foot when you're looking at tiny homes compared to other homes. In addition to that, you do tend to find that the islands and keys are more expensive. And the reason for that, I mean, it's a very pretty, pretty logical reason, but there's transfer, extra transportation costs to get the items from Belize mainland, for example. So you're gonna have higher prices on the islands. Uh, what you will find though that costs less than in North America and in many other countries is labor. Uh, labor here is very inexpensive compared to California. We'll say typically it's about five Belize dollars an hour. So $2.50 an hour um, for labor. So that's probably where you'll be saving. Um, building permits are also not incredibly expensive. I think it was about maybe about four or $500. That also depends on totally what you're building. But uh, I do tend to find that those are less expensive than North America as well. What will most likely cost more than what you expect are appliances, solar imported items. And the reason for that is because Belize does not really produce much. Um, it's a small country and produce is typically one of the big exports here. But we don't necessarily have a lot of those factories like Mexico does, for example. So, you know, some people are trying to compare Mexico to Belize cost wise, and they're two totally different comparisons because in Belize they, or Mexico, they produce a lot. So they're able to just take what they have from the factory, bring it down to the condo or the home and put it in. Where in Belize, we're bringing things in from North America, from Mexico, from Guatemala. So there is that cost of transportation. And then there's also the duties and customs fees on top of that. So understand that too. Uh, and then what will cost about the same is materials, just like everywhere in the world. Uh, we saw a, a major increase in wood over the last couple of years. The one benefit is that here in Belize, we do produce a lot of wood, mahogany, bullet tree, um, inkwood. A lot of those are used in construction. And so that may be a little bit cheaper than what you would pay for mahogany in the States, for example. But I wouldn't suggest for you to really, um, to really make that a, a, a big difference in price. And so, you know, I can tell you, so I'm, I'm currently building a little vacation home there in, in, on the mainland. And uh, we decided to just do a Mennonite house, two bedroom, two bath, 800 square feet. And there are three primary Mennonite builders in Spanish lookout on the mainland. So we visited all three. One of them was, you know, really cheap. One of them was in the middle. One of them was just really expensive. And so what I found though is, you know, while we were drawn in by the, oh, it's $40,000, uh, Belize to get the shell or $60,000 to get the shell, you know, what you have to consider are the finishes that are going to be in the home. You know, do you want AC? Do you want finishes like you're used to in the state? Because we could have very easily gotten that, that 30,000 US shell, but then we wanted to finish it to have the comforts that we're used to. So you can find those really inexpensive properties if you want them, but at the end of the day, you know, it may not necessarily be what you're, you're used to. And I think 
you know, when we factored out the numbers, what we ended up seeing was that it's about $150 US a square foot for a Mennonite house, a prefab Mennonite house that included the deck. It included the, uh, the, the concrete bottom. It included, you know, a lot of those finishes that we were really looking for. So, I mean, that's not at all a number for you to write down and say, it's gonna be 150 feet a square foot, but $150 a square foot, but just something for you to understand. All right, second market myth here is about the MLS. So there is no central MLS system. And also the real estate websites are really not updated as the sales happen. So you may spend all of this time going through all of the websites for all the different real estate companies here and see ultimately that something is available. And then you check in about it and like, oh, sorry, that sold six months ago. So it is a bit difficult to find properties here. Um, and that's really where we recommend you find somebody who is in country, who's very familiar with the market to help you out from that perspective. This was one of my favorite. There's Ambergris Key MLS, or MLS Ambergris Key .com, which is not actually a real MLS for the island. It is just a couple of different real estate companies that came together and said, all right, let's just buy this website, buy this domain and claim it as an MLS. So just something for you to think about there too. All right, the next one is the real estate agents. So here in Belize, we don't have training. There's no licensing that happens. And um, so real estate agents essentially are people who say, yep, the real estate market looks great. I think I'll help people find property. Um, and of course they're a bit more professional than that in most cases, but there's no formal training that's needed. And so um, what I would recommend, there is an association here, the Belize National Association of Real Estate. Um, it's the one that I sit on the board of, but they do a really incredible job at vetting the agents so that they're able to look into who they are as a person, how long they've been practicing real estate, and then you'll be able to find somebody to reach out to through that website there. The next myth we're gonna talk about is the titling process. So um, this is important, really write this down because I don't ever see this advertised on any real estate agent's pages is that in Belize, there is an 8% titling fee. It's called a stamp tax. It's 8% of the purchase price. And that is not factored into any of the listing prices that you'll see. So bear that in mind. If you see a home that's being listed for $200,000, you're going to need an additional $16,000 to get that stamp tax. And then there'll be about another 2 or 3% there for the attorney. So do understand that. You probably want to save about 11 or 12% on top of the purchase price in order to get it completed. Um, also, it takes about 12 to 18 months to receive your physical title. Um, there, I know there's a lot of information on this slide here, and I'm happy to send this to folks, but this outlines the buying process in Belize. And the reason that I wanted to mention this is because this last part right over here, where it says 12 to 18 months, um, that's at this last point over here, is it's not uncommon for you to, to take that long to receive your physical title. However, when your property is being registered with the lands department. So I'm gonna just give you a quick overview of the process. You decide a home that you wanna purchase, you'll put down a deposit for it. You and the, the seller will sign an agreement and offer to purchase letter. Everyone's you know happy about it, we're excited. And then from there, um, the closing process will begin. It takes about a month or two for this closing process. And this is typically where the attorney will give you a clear um, a, a clear go ahead that the title is under who they say it's under. You'll, they'll also require some documents from you. They'll have to get a central bank clearance from you if you're a foreigner, which the attorney will take care of all that, but they do the buyer's due diligence. And then from there, a week before you're set to close, um, then you'll make the balance of the payment that's due. And then once that balance is paid, then from there, your land will be registered with the lands department or your property will be registered with the lands department. At that point, you'll get what they call an LRS number. You can see it on the, the, the bottom right, the receipt of instruments. This is the information that shows, I mean, essentially shows that you are the owner of the land. I know for some folks, especially those from the States where we're used to being in getting titles in 30, 60 days, uh, here, you're not gonna receive that physical title, but you will get an LRS number, which shows that you are the legitimate owner of that property. And then they also have started an online portal, Lands Department has, where you're able to type in your LRS number and see where that physical title is at in the process. Sometimes it's updated, sometimes it's not. So I wouldn't really depend on that, but your attorney can certainly help you if you are feeling uncomfortable. And you might've noticed that I mentioned the attorney to help you close. You are not required to have an attorney to help you close. You can go through it if you want on your own. However, I think that two to 3% extra is incredibly worth it to have somebody walking you through this. I've personally purchased you know, four or five properties here in Belize and every time I've hired an attorney to get me through that titling process because 
I don't want to take those trips to Belmo Pan and stand in lines and maybe not get in the office and then have to come back the next day and wonder what's going on. It just provides you a lot of peace of mind working with an attorney. And in addition to that, a lot of attorneys have escrow accounts in the States primarily where you'll put that the funds in and then once everything is good to go, then they'll be the ones who move the funds from escrow to the seller. So there's that nice advantage there too, um, that you have that escrow account. I know that gives us a lot of peace of mind as well. Um, the one thing I will mention is if you're buying from a development, this process is a little different. A lot of developers either have their own in-house attorney or in-house help, and they may be doing it a little bit different, but this is a standard process when you are buying a resale property. All right, let's talk about the, the fifth myth here, which is the infrastructure. So please remember that Belize is a developing country and it's still fairly new when it comes to tourism. So with that being said, you know, you can't expect the same amenities that we have in North America, for example, or even Mexico. You know, Mexico, I'd say, is probably a second world country at this point. It's certainly more developed than Belize, but Belize is you know, moving forward with having an improvement in infrastructure. Uh, you know, there was this huge boom in tourism over the last 10, 15 years. And unfortunately, the infrastructure hasn't paralleled the growth as the tourism has boomed, really. So um, it is, I think, going to be a little bit of time. Quite often I hear people talk about, oh, what do you think about that international airport that's going up in the, the north part of uh, Ambergris? It's like, well, I've heard about it for the last 10 years and haven't seen any progress with it. So, you know, I'd say if someone promises you, if you're getting promised by somebody that this infrastructure is going to go in by a certain date, um, I would certainly not, you know, count on it. Um, especially when it comes to the value of your property. Understand that if you're buying the property and if you have a set timeline for that infrastructure being there, um, you may be wildly disappointed when that infrastructure does not come in within that time. And like I was mentioning to the folks who are, who are on the call a couple of minutes early, that we do have Belize time here in this country. It's a very real concept. People that will show up 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes late to meetings. And that is also carried over to a lot of the infrastructure work. And it's not necessarily minutes. It might be months or years that go by until it's actually fixed. So one thing I would say is for everybody, you know, probably add into your budget, getting some deep tissue massages every now and again, because the roads, while the primary roads are good, um, it's a lot of those offshoot roads that uh, you do tend to find are a little potholy. Uh, so with that being said, I know uh, here on the island, specifically Ambergris, there are a lot of developments or uh, lands that is being sold and there's no utilities going to that. There's no public water, there's no electricity which isn't a bad thing, but it's good for you to know if you are counting on that. A lot of people do end up doing solar or do end up doing their own water catchment system, but it is important for you to ask those sort of questions. Are there public utilities, for example, going to my property or is that something that I have to take in mind? And then also here, um, infrastructure, and I'm also including healthcare in that. I'd say healthcare is a C plus at best. Here in the country, there is supposed to be an international standard hospital that is going on the island here. Um, it's, launched or announced earlier this year or last year. I don't know, haven't heard anything more since. We'd all love for it to come. Um, there are pretty good clinics. So if you need uh, any medical emergency here on the island or in the country generally. All right, so here are a couple more questions from folks that were emailing with me before. Um, one is how long is a property on the market for? So what is the general average of properties on the market? And again, I know it's a little vague of an answer but it depends entirely. Um, there's a home there on the left-hand side. Some of you have been to Ambergris and actually recognize it as the old Taste of Thailand restaurant on the first floor. The owners lived on the second floor. This one has been for sale by owner over the last five years. I think prior to that, they did try working with a real estate agent, but um, you know there really hasn't been much movement with this property. Um, then there's a the property on the right-hand side, Grand Creve, which those condos are in high demand. You know, there's a limited number of them. They have actually quite a bit at the complex, but a lot of people are very happy with the rental management. They're happy with um, the condition of, of which their property is kept up. And so there aren't many sales, but when there are, there are sales, people will want to be in this development. So these really are only on the market for a few weeks. So I'd say when you're when when buyers are looking and they find that good deal, they're likely to swoop up the property right away. It's like this everywhere in the world, right? But if uh, they don't feel like the, the buyers don't feel like it's a good deal, then they're not going to necessarily be um, be holding on to it. So I would say though that on average, you know, expect if you have an emergency, you need to liquidate your property. I'd say expect four to six months for the property to sell. And a primary part of our sales season is in what we call high season here. It's when there's a lot of tourism and generally runs about middle of November through middle of May. 
um, with Christmas and New Year's and spring break time being the peak season when we're seeing a lot of people here. So that's really when a lot of the sales do happen. So, you know, if you want to list your property in May, well, then you probably want to add a little bit of time onto that in order to get that property sold since it is considered low season here. Uh, another question that was asked was about home ownership and how to structure it. And again, you'll see my answer there. It really depends on a lot of factors. Um, you know, it really depends on what you are looking to accomplish as an individual. If the property is primarily going to be a rental for you, I would recommend putting it in a local 250 company. It's a local company that is authorized to do business here. If you want to make it easier to pass it down to your, your kids or your heirs on the line, you probably want to put it in a company or a trust. Um, and here's a point that I'll make for everybody who's listening, regardless of where in the world you have property, do make sure you're setting up a will in that country and it's somehow integrated into your will in your home country because you want to, will want to make it easier for your heirs down the line should there be anything that happens. In addition to that, if you are thinking on the terms of asset protection, I know um, typically a lot of lawyers and doctors, they do tend to think in this way, but if you want to have it protected, I would say put in a company or trust. And then if you'd rather just not have that company structure or those expenses, and you really just wanna make it easy, then you can title it there in your personal name. But uh, what I would recommend is talking to your attorney when you are going through that closing process and really talk with him or her to decide what makes the most sense for your specific situation. All right, guys, here we are, poll number two. Let me get this up. What do you wanna do with your property? And I know it may be a little bit premature for folks. So, you know, you just give it your best shot. Do you wanna live in it full time uh, sooner rather than later? Do you wanna rent it out and have it produce income? Do you want to buy now, live later? I'll give you a couple more seconds there because I you know that the, the question's a little bit longer and a little bit more uh, thought out. All right, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. All right, I'm going to end the poll and then share the results here. So it looks like about 38%, well, it's almost about one third for these, but are looking to live in it sooner rather than later. Awesome, we're always looking for new neighbors in the country. Um, 33% want to produce income. Awesome. It's a great market for that too. And then 29% want to buy now, live later, which I think is one of the smartest things you can do uh, because we are seeing that the real estate does just continue to increase. So already, perfect. I'm going to quit out of that. And we're going to go to our next section here, which is the top six places to explore. So over the next few slides, as we go through each district, I'm going to start at the northern part of the country and work our way down. So we'll start with Corzal, work our way down to Placencia. But for those of you who aren't too familiar with the layout of the country, I wanna just stay here for a quick moment uh, to help you really understand where things are located in the country. Um, it's a very small country. There's four main highways on Belize mainland. And uh, those are actually in pretty good condition driving wise. You just have to be careful of the speed bumps and potholes every now and again. But uh, that would be my only caution when you're, when you're driving on the mainland. Um, but I would say, you know, it, it does take a little bit of time because, you know, in the States or in a lot of developed countries, you have freeways where you're able to go to, you know, 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. So you're getting places a little bit sooner here. Um, you don't necessarily have those sort of freeways. You have the paved roads, but you're not necessarily going that fast to get from location to location. So, for example, from Belize City to Cayo District, it takes about an, an hour and a half to about two hours. I mean, it depends where you're going in Cayo, but let's say San Ignacio, which is uh, where that, that forest green pin is. Um, if you're going to Placencia, for example, from Belize City, it's about three and a half hours. If you're going down south, it takes even more time, but just to give you some perspective, and I mentioned before, but it's about the size of Massachusetts. So for those of you who are from that part of the world, maybe you're able to, to think about that in terms of uh, location too. All right, so when it comes to owning properties, um, especially for those of you who are thinking about this from the investment perspective, it is important to understand where the money is. Right, and for a lot of people, typically we wanna earn rental revenue from properties that we have as an investment. A lot of times we like the appreciation too, but I'd see more people who are buying land or buying properties with the intention to get rental income from it. So the Belize Tourism Board, BTB, they put out this report. You can go to their website and you can see this. They have a year to date for 2020 and for about four or five, six different slides. And you're able to look at some different stats, but this is the one I wanted to pull for you is where are the visitors going? So when people land in Belize City, where is it that they're going? Because most people don't stay in Belize City unless they're doing you know, business or they live there, for example, and maybe they're staying a night or two. But in most cases, when people are coming to the country, they're flying into Belize City and then going somewhere else. So the chart I have on the left-hand side is for 2022 year to date. And then on the right-hand side, it's 2019 
Um, and that's obviously a full year since that was completed before COVID, wanted to show pre-COVID numbers. So 2022, uh, you can see here year to date, San Pedro is the destination in the country that is seeing the most number of tourism. Um, I'm not really surprised San Pedro is one area that continues to uh, be visited by a lot of tourists because of the reef. And then behind that would be Cayo District, which is more the jungles and the rivers, Placencia, uh, and then Key Cocker. And so you can see in 2019, it was really very, very similar. It was Amber Gris Key. Key Cocker was actually in second, and then San Ignacio Hopkins kind of, and then Belize City is usually for, for business purposes. So we can take that out for the time being. So top places to own, um, Corozal is popular because of the location, it's close to the Mexican border. It's really known as a quiet fishing village There are a few retirement communities there as well. Ambergris Key and Key Cocker, these um, two islands here are really the most popular when it comes to tourism and the expat population. I'm on Ambergris Key, it's where we have the, the largest number of expats in the entire destination, the entire country of Belize, and it's popular because of that reef. Cayo District, this is where you find more of the farms and the rolling hills and jungle area, rivers. And it's great for people who want to be really closer to nature. I'd say there's a lot of hiking over there uh, and a lot of uh, folks who are looking for larger tracts of land for farming. Hopkins, uh, this is an area that's up and coming. I personally prefer it to Placencia. I think there's a lot of opportunity for appreciation in Hopkins compared to Placencia. But this is where you have really beautiful coastal beaches. And you also have river properties here too on the City River. Um, and what personally I like about Hopkins is that you have the water and then you could be hiking in 15, 20 minutes at the Cox Home Basin. So um, this, I think for me personally is the best of both worlds, but, and I am starting to see it become more popular. Placencia, um, I've, I've know a lot of folks have expressed interest in Placencia. This is, this is a, a popular destination for tourists as we saw before, um, but it does tend to be a lot quieter than places like Ambergris Key or Key Cocker. Uh, in addition to that, you have more of those larger single family homes there. There are some developments as well, but it certainly is a lot more laid back than the Keys. All right, so we're gonna jump a little bit more into the districts, talk about Corozal. So Corozal is about two hours from uh, <coughs> Belize City where we had that star and that first and that first page. Population for the district is about 10,000 people. And it's known, like I mentioned, for the proximity to Mexico. So in Belize, we don't have the chain stores. We don't have Sam's Club. We don't have Home Depot. We don't have all of those elements. And so when people want to have those department stores or those bigger stores, they'll hop over the border to Mexico, pick up as much as they need, and then come back. And for some people, they like that convenience. We don't necessarily have that sort of convenience in Belize, but from Corazal, you do have more access. Here's an example of a home. Um, this is a, a single family home for about $230,000. Uh, $230, you can see there are three bed, two bath. And I'd say Corozal is one of the more affordable places if you are looking for a single family home. Um, and I'm gonna just show you a couple of examples from each district. And then down the line, we're gonna have specific market analysis sessions for each of the areas where I'll give you more examples. But I just wanna give you a little taste of what it looks like now. All right, Ambergris Key, we're gonna jump over. I mentioned the reef too. You can see the reef in this picture, which is one of the big reasons, as I mentioned before, people are coming here for that diving and fishing and and snorkeling. And it takes about 15 minutes to get to this island from Belize City uh, by Puddle Jumper, or it takes about an hour and a half if you decided to take the water taxi. Uh, population, actually, this is interesting. So there wasn't really a census done anytime soon or anytime recently, but uh, according to Nemo, there is an estimated population here of about 55,000 people. So a bit more than people anticipated, um, but about 55,000 people living here on the island of Ambergris Key. And like I mentioned, known for the reef and the fishing and snorkeling. Um, this is personally where I decided to call home because I liked the expat community here. I like the fact that there are things to do. There's comedy shows, there's live music. It's easy to get around. You know, we have our little golf carts and that's how we drive through, through the island. And for me, I liked that level of, of, of comfort. And then if you're here, I definitely recommend trying Holchan and, and Shark Royale for diving or snorkeling. And then you can take what they call what the food tour which is really neat. You go to a handful of the different uh, local restaurants and try some of the top dishes here. So here's some land, because um, I know a handful of you are also looking at vacant land where you just want to hold on to it now. And especially while prices are at the point that they're at, especially um, maybe down the line you want to build. But here are four lots. Uh, I give an example of two here on the screen, lot number 17. These properties are located just west of San Pedro town, still on Ambergris Key. You can get here by boat. Um, but this area over here, there are the four lots and number 17 here is going for about $75,000. Um, I think that one's probably 
one of my favorites because of the fact that you do have that water view right there from that lot. Lot number 14 is going for about 60,000. Um, and for land, for vacant land, I found that these prices are really quite good. There is connection to the local utilities. So before we were talking about electricity hookup, you do have electricity hookup here where a lot of the other vacant lands that are being sold outside of San Pedro town do not. Uh, here's a home, a, a pre-construction tiny home uh, that's going for about 240,000. It's one bed, one bath, about 641 square feet. And remember what I was talking to you about before, uh, when it comes to price per square foot, if it's a tiny home, prices do tend to be a little bit more per square foot because you're compacting everything inside that structure. So um, I've gone out to this property quite a bit. It's probably uh, one of my favorites out here because of the location. If you're a fly fisherman, this is most definitely a place that you should be looking because you're able to do that right there from your deck or, uh, or your veranda out into the canal. And uh, all of the homes there on the canal do have water views and you're able to get that sunset view as well. So these are pre-construction and uh, they are there are actually a few homes that are already constructed. Um, they're not tiny homes, they're more studio styles, but I'm happy to give that information to folks. Here is a two bedroom, one bath over the water home. This is really great for people who wanna be in the rental market. The reason I say that is because it's a very unique concept the over the water home. This one's about 750 square feet. Uh, one of my favorite features here is the plunge pool that you see, and then there's also the swing and you're looking right out. This is another great spot for people who are fly fishermen to come because you can just go right out there in the water and, and fish. Here's an example of a single family home right there on the water. And so I wanted to show this example because I know um, it's attractive for us to have a single family home on the water, but you do see that it does tend to be more expensive. This one was going for about 1.3 million, four bed, four bath, but it does have that view right there of the Caribbean. Uh, for those of you who want to be in a condo community, perhaps you wanna live there full time or you wanna rent it out. Um, this would be one of my best suggestions. It's a three bed, two bath in a development called Las Terrazas. Las Terrazas is highly um, recommended on TripAdvisor. It's in the top 10. It's constantly receiving awards for being one of the leading hotels in Belize. Uh, this one's located about 15 minutes north of town. And the condo that's for sale is not waterfront, but it does have a water view from the veranda. So this one's a three bed, two bath. And then also pre-construction opportunity. This is in a branded hotel, the Best Western. So there's a one bedroom on the fifth floor uh, going for about 190 plus furniture package and plus those closing costs. Remember to always add the closing costs onto the numbers that you see. Uh, this one is unique because they do offer up to 80% financing and it's not really common for developers or sellers to have financing. If they are, it's definitely by seller. Um, you know, you don't typically go through a bank to do the financing because um, rates just tend to be fairly high or they don't accept foreigners for banking purposes. All right, Key Cocker, we're gonna jump over to our sister island over here. Key Cocker is what I would say Ambergris Key was 20 years ago. The streets are still sandy, uh, whereas in Ambergris Key, we've started to see them get paved. The motto here is go slow. So people do tend to go slow, um, but distance wise, it's about 10 minutes by puddle jumper and then an hour by water taxi from Belize City. Population is smaller, it's about 2000 people. It's a much smaller destination as well. And here you also have that barrier reef and the fishing and the diving. Here we do tend to see um, a lot of, I'd say, uh, backpackers who are coming through Key Cocker. And so the market there does tend to cater to backpackers. There are a couple luxury hotels, um, but I'd say the market here is, is really Europeans or backpackers. And then if you're there, you must try the Iguana Reef and go there around 4, 4.30. The stingrays are getting fed. It's a pretty neat concept. They'll just come right up to you and that's, uh, pet them if you want, but it's a pretty a pretty neat concept. Or you can uh, spend the day at Lazy Lizard, which is at an area called The Split. You have water all around you. You're able to jump in. You can jump off a platform that they have there, um, but it's a really beautiful, relaxing place to be. So here's the example of a 50 by 100 piece of land. This is vacant land at this point, and this is going for 78,000. You can see that there was a price drop there. And then also we have here an example of a fixer upper. I had a couple of you asking me about opportunities where you want to buy something that needs a little bit of rehab, you want to put your own love into it and make it really what you want it to be. Uh, this is one of the only properties actually I found on Amber or at Key Cocker rather, that is a two bedroom fixer upper one bath for 185. So, um, and that's US. So it's, I think, quite reasonable for being on for having the bones. Probably does need to be um, fixed up a little bit, as you can see from the pictures, but a good option as well. All right, we're going to jump to the Cayo district. So this is about an hour and a half 
from the airport to San Ignacio. And you can only see it's only a 73 miles, but it does take a little bit of time to get there to stop at those speed bumps and whatnot. Population of the entire district is about 100,000. And this area is really known for the rivers and the jungles, cave exploration, cave tubing. There are a lot of Mayan ruins over here. Uh, there's a big Mennonite population too, farming. Uh, you can see all that off the grid living. And I would recommend if you're here, definitely try the ATM caves. You're able to go spelunking through caves, see old Mayan artifacts that were left in the cave. It's probably one of the, 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 the top 10 things I've done in my life was going to visit ATM and then also explore the farmer's market on Saturday. Here's an example of some vacant land going for about 240,000. This is 50 acres of riverfront. Now, granted, it may not have access. It may not have um, access to utilities, but this one I think is a great bargain uh, for 50 acres there uh, with some water elements to it. And then here's an example. I had a couple of you also asking me about tiny homes that were either off-grid or off-grid living. So here's an example at Carmelita Garden. Carmelita is a project I've been following for who the last six or seven years. And it's been really neat to see the property grow and this community get built. Um, this owner does have to sell at this point, but uh, I think it's quite reasonable for about 150,000. It's a one bed, one bath. If anybody's interested in learning more about it, feel free to let me know. All right, now we're gonna jump down to Hopkins. And uh, you can see here the beautiful coastline of Hopkins. And there really are just a couple of roads in the entire town, which is pretty neat. You can see a couple of them here in this drone footage. Um, but as I mentioned, this is probably one of my favorite spots on the mainland because it does have that hiking and has that beach access. About two hours from Belize City, small population. This area is really known for the Garifuna culture there. So you have a lot of dancing, you have really good food. It does have the Cox Home Park that I was talking to you about. So there's waterfalls and hiking, the Jaguar Reserve is over there. Um, there's a lot of chocolate that's produced in this part of the country as well. And then there's also the City River, which is where I did probably another one of my top 10 experiences, which was a bioluminescence tour and the Sunset River boat ride. So you go on this boat down the City River, and then you go to this lagoon and you're able to jump into the lagoon. You have the bioluminescence around you. It's really just incredibly stunning. I would highly recommend that for more of the adventure travelers. So here you have those sandy beaches, but you also have those hiking spots and the waterfalls. An example here is an income producing villa for about $450,000 is a three bed, three bath. And then here's an example of a river lot. Um, this is about $53,000 or four lots, so 53,000 each. And there's about 200 feet of riverfront per lot. It's left in its natural state. So you'll have to uh, you know, fix it up to, to be able to build on it. And it's not, I do wanna make one point there is I put in the natural state, in its natural state um, for a reason, because I think it's important for you to know that in Belize, it's not uncommon for you to have to fill or if you're on water to have to put a seawall in. So do you understand that sometimes when you're buying a lot, it's not ready to build. So one of those questions that you should be asking is, is it ready to build? If not, do I have to fill it? Well, I had to put a seawall in. And you know, this is something that I recently went through with um, a Hopkins property that I purchased is, um, you know, I knew where the, the lot was, but I can tell you that there was no communication about it needing fill or it needing a seawall. And I went down and visited and saw, you know, that it really kind of is swampy there and it will need that fill. I will need that wall put up, you know, which is an additional X amount of dollars. So those are things that you have to consider, especially as you are budgeting out your numbers. All right, the last place we're gonna talk about here and then we'll jump into FAQs or in Q and A is Placencia and Maya Beach. So you'll hear these two names um, quite a bit. Maya Beach is just North of Placencia, but it's there in that same peninsula. So you have a lot of opportunities there. You see Maya Beach is where you see more of the, com the condo complexes. And then Placencia is where you find more of the single family homes. Actually, it's a bit of a mixed bowl, but um, it's about three hours, three and a half hours from Belize City. Population is about 5,000, uh, 5, not 500,000, 5,000. And here, Placencia is a really popular spot for people to go island hopping. There are a lot of little islands right off of the coast of Placencia. You're able to go diving and fishing, snorkeling, except I do want to note that the reef is further from Placentia than it is from Ambergris Key. So people who really want to go diving typically stay on Ambergris Key or Key Cocker because you're at the reef in just a couple of minutes. Whereas here it's you know, an hour, hour and a half to get to the reef. If you are in Placentia, I recommend the Sunset Pontoon Ride with Sandy Cove Belize. That's what we, we're doing there on the left-hand side. It's an incredible boat. They made this pontoon boat out of all local hardwood. And it's just, I haven't been on anything like it before. And so that's why I would recommend it as a top spot to go. But I mentioned to you, island hopping is one of the popular things to do there. Also beach dining. 
So the island that you see here on the left-hand side is called King Louis Island, and it's also for sale. So if anybody is interested in, in owning an established resort that's already there operating, it's going for about 3.5 million. And uh, it's located probably about, hmm, we did a few other islands when we did that trip, but say about 20, 25 minutes, maybe a little bit more than that from uh, the Placencia coast. Uh, here's an example of a condo that accepts cryptocurrency that's on the left hand side, but I gave you another example of a condo within the same complex. So that condo that's accepting cryptocurrency, it's a three bed, I think three bath it is. And this one is 369,000, whereas the property on the right hand side is the same resort, but it's Lagoon View instead of on the, the beachfront. And this one's going for about 220,000. So remember, I was talking to you about that coastline premium. If you're there on the coast, you are going to be seeing higher price tags on the real estate that you're looking at. All right, last poll of the session here. And then we'll jump. I see a lot of cute questions coming in. So let me get this third poll up. Which area or areas is of most interest to you? You can choose multiple here if you're not really sure where it is that you want to be. Um, so I'll give you a couple of seconds to, to think about it. All righty, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, I'm gonna close the poll here and I'll share the results with you all. All right, so it looks like, okay, yes, you can see it. So it looks like it's about 23% cores. Obviously the percentages aren't gonna add up to 100 since you can choose multiple, um, but 45% Amber Grisky, Key Cocker, 29, Kyle 33, Hopkins 48. Awesome, Placentia 21, awesome, awesome. Well, I'm happy to, uh, to see that it looks like we'll be neighbors in a couple of places. All right, so I mentioned to you that this is really just a 101 session. I just wanted to give you a little bit more information about Belize generally as a destination for you to own real estate. What we're gonna be doing over the next few months here is what we're gonna call Belize briefs. And we're gonna have specified sections, that specified Zoom meetings or workshops where we're going to go through certain topics. So they may not be an hour long, some of them may be 10 minutes, some of them may be 45 minutes, some may be two hours, who knows? Um, but we are gonna be talking about really specific topics as a way for you to learn more about the specific areas that you're looking at. So our next one is going to be the Amber Grist Key Market. Um, that's gonna be next Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Eastern time, 2 p.m. Pacific. Uh, I know that the times may not work for everybody. We're gonna just play around with the times a little bit over the next couple of months too, to try to accommodate the most number of people, but um, we are gonna record it. So even if you can't join us for the live session, make sure you register, you'll get a copy of the recording. And I'm gonna send you a Zoom link for that. If you wanna join, that'll be in the email that's sent out with this recording here. So you'll probably get that later on tonight. So just uh, be on the lookout for that. And if anybody's listening to this on YouTube or or somewhere after the fact, feel free to reach out and we're happy to get you that information too. So some of the other topics are gonna to be the market analysis workshops for the other areas of the country. Um, also we're gonna go through that buying and titling process a lot more in depth than what I did on that quick screen um, share there. Also we'll go through residency. I know that's a huge topic for a lot of people and then have a few expat panels, plus a lot more topics. That's just a quick overview of what we'll be doing. And then also uh, I have a resource guide for you that I've created based on being here in the region for a while. And also I have in there a list of considerations for you to ask yourself if you're looking for an investment property or for a residential property, um, because there are some things that we don't realize that we need to be thinking about prior to purchasing. So I put down a handful of those questions for you. You can email me, um, info at lunarealtybelize.com. It's also under the resources section on the website. You can download that. So just feel free to access that there. All right, what we're gonna do now, I think I spoke for a little bit longer than I intended to, so sorry about that, but we can go over if you guys have time and wanna stay on. Otherwise, like I mentioned, we will send you the recording after. Okay, so awesome, awesome. George, he says, I haven't been to Belize yet, but would like to gain residency through real estate investment leading to a second passport. Okay. That's a great, uh, a great point there. So there are three residencies in the country that um, folks can consider. In this guide that I have here on this screen, you will see um, that I do talk about residency there a little bit as well. But for the one that you're looking at, George, you can make an investment of $250,000 US into the country. From there, you will be able to, you'll have what they call a temporary residency. And then after the fifth year of having that temporary residency, you'll have a permanent residency. And then at that point too, you're able to apply for citizenship. 
Um, just note that because you guys, and this is good for everybody, just because you have purchased property here doesn't mean you're automatically going to get residency or automatically get citizenship. You really have to be strategic if this is the residency that you want to do because you can't finance the property. The money has to come into a Belize bank. So they have to see here in Belize that the $250,000 has come in. Um, and then after time, over time, you can eventually get your passport or apply for your passport. Can't guarantee you're going to get it, but you can apply for it. And then do note that it is quite bureaucratic here. And we are in a tropical country where the country's line, the slogan is under the shade, we flourish. So do know things take time. I know somebody that was applying for the passport took them about three years to get that. It's not impossible, but it does certainly take a little bit of time. So I just want to be transparent about that as well. Okay, Dwayne, great question here. While discussing fees, how much is common for the realtor? So um, here, so it's about 8% for like condos, homes, and then 10% for lands. And I know it's it's high, especially for those of you who are used to that 6%, um, you know, 3% goes to the buyer's agent, 3% goes to the seller's agent. And so you can do some negotiating as well with the real estate agents if you are looking to bring them on. Uh, but do bear that in mind that it is 8% for properties and then 10%. Um, and then also, you know, I've had a couple of clients that we have done negotiations as well. And just understand though, that buyer's agent is going to expect four or 5%, right? They get half of that commission. So the buyer's agent is going to expect that. So, um, you know, you really don't want to go too low because then you may not necessarily be having as many showings as, as you could be if you were getting what the, the agents are typically used to. So just something for you to bear in mind. All right, Marcella saying, what about bigger pieces of land for agricultural development, such as small farms? Are they available? What about deeds? I did not get a title of ownership. Is that available? Is price tag in the US or please? All right, let me break that down one by one. Yes, there certainly are larger parcels of land for agricultural development. Uh, there's really fertile soil in Belize mainland. So you are able to look at those opportunities. Feel free to reach out to me, Marcella. I can send you some um, deeds. So you do receive a deed to the property. You do get a title. Do um, everyone request this book and download this, this little guide because I do talk about um, getting deeds and making sure you're not buying a lease, making sure you're buying property that's actually titled. And then are the price tags in US or Belize? Okay, great question there. So price tags are in US dollars. When foreigners are buying real estate in the country, the transaction tends to be in US dollars. If it's Belize dollars, it's typically when there's a transaction happening between Belizeans. So just expect, I've said it before, but it, you know, when you're in Belize, expect everything to be in Belize dollars, like when you're at the store or tours or something like that, unless it comes to real estate, then you'll see prices are in US dollars. Oh, Dave said, monthly immigration office visits and payments seem like a real pain, your thoughts. Okay, so let me expand on that so folks have an idea of what Dave is mentioning there. When you come into the country as a tourist and you wanna spend time here, you know, four, five, six months, however many months that is, um, you, when you come into the country, you get a stamp for a 30 day tourist visa. So you are able to stay in the country for 30 days. Beyond that 30 days, you need to go to the immigration office, pay a hundred US dollars, it has to actually be in Belize dollars, but it's 200 Belize dollars, which is equivalent to 100 US dollars. And then they'll give you a stamp for another 30 days. And you really don't want to be late because then technically you're in the country illegally and you could be heavily fined or kicked out of the country. So um, it is a pain if you are not close to an immigration office. You know, here in Ambergris Key, we're really lucky to have an immigration office right across the street from Tropic Air. So going there really isn't difficult for a lot of people, but I think the difficult part is remembering that you have an appointment. So when you get into the country, make sure that you're checking to know when it is you're going to be um, expired, that tourist visa is going to be expiring, and when you need to go to the office. I would go a day before it expires just to make sure you're there on time. So um, it is a bit of a pain. I know that there are some people who live further from immigration offices, like in Kyle, for example, you have to go to Belmopan for it. Um, so it's just a little bit trickier there, but it is possible, or you can go to, I think the, the border, you're able to go as well. So there are options. Dave is asking about Punta Gorda or the Orange Walk District. Uh, great question, Dave, but I can talk about that with you a little bit more offline. And um, those are definitely great areas. I'd say they're not as popular in terms of tourism. Um, by any means necessarily, but there are great opportunities if you want to buy land inexpensively. And then what's the average cost? Daniel's asking, what is the average rental cost for living long-term in Ambergris or Hopkins? All right, so I'm going to say an average two bed, two bath on the water here in Ambergris, probably about 1,700, 15 to 1,700 
US, you're able to get something off the water or maybe with lagoon views or sunset views for probably about 1200. Um, and then you're able to find one bedrooms for anywhere between 700 to about 1100 US dollars. Hopkins is less than that. Typically in Hopkins, you can find a rental for under a hundred thousand or that would be an expensive rental, a, a rental for under a thousand dollars for a two bed, two bath with water views. Um, but it really also depends. Also bear in mind, it depends on when you're coming because here in Belize, we have what we call high season and high season I mentioned before, but it's middle of November through middle of May. So that's when we have a lot of the tourists coming. That's the primary season for your, you to be getting that rental income coming in. And so if you're coming during that time, you're probably going to find that prices are more expensive. But if you're coming during the slower season, you'll find that they may be a little bit lower. All right, Lori said, sorry, I joined late. Was there any mention of the crime rate? Thank you for bringing this up or policing resources. Awesome, Lori, thanks for bringing this up. So I did not mention it. So what I do want to say is that in Belize, a lot of the crime that does happen, I know if you like type Belize crime into Google, you have and see all these horrible stories. A lot of the crime is really centered in Belize city and it's very localized. A lot of it is um, related to the drug industry here. And if you're not in the drug industry, if you're not going to the, the ghetto at three in the morning to buy drugs, you'll probably be okay. There is petty theft that does happen every now and again. Um, so I'd say just you know be extra cautious. You know, if you're leaving the house, for example, probably lock your doors. Um, but I'd say that it's really not violent crime, especially in these tourism places. A lot of the locals here um, and in the country generally, it's they know it's a tourism industry, right? So they're looking to protect the tourists who are here. So you typically don't see crimes against tourists per se or against expats. If there are crimes against expats, sometimes like, what did they get into? Um, but otherwise, I'd say it's it's quite low when it comes to being uh, a tourist or an expat here. Alan is saying, is there any financing available about, available at all? Um, is it only the best Western property offering? Okay, great question. So this is going to be a very blanket statement here. In Belize, it's very difficult for a foreigner to get financing with a bank. So typically what happens is there'll be sellers who are offering financing. So let's say I'm going to be buying a single family home down the beach from Fred. And Fred, as the owner of that home, is saying, you know, I'd really like to sell it to you. I want you to put at least 50% down. And typically there is a balloon payment of, of sorts. So he is going to give me the rate that he wants to see. Maybe there's a little bit of negotiation. And then during that time, um, I'm paying Fred for this property. And then eventually when the property is paid off, I'll get it in my name. Now, not all properties have the seller offering financing. Not all developments offer financing either. So it's really just dependent on the property that is being sold. Um, there are some developments that do have great financing. Best Western is one of them. It's probably some of the best financing I've seen. You do have to go through a little bit of a process and, and get a bank account with the bank that's offering the financing, but it is possible. Marvin is saying, how often is Belize hit by hurricanes? Oh gosh, um, there's certainly no pattern to it. We are in the hurricane belt. We've had some uh, tropical storms over the last few years. The last hurricane that we got was 2016, which was Hurricane Earl. That was a category one. Uh, that did do some damage to the docks that are off the coast over here. Um, but it's not really, you know, we are in the hurricane belt, but I'd say that a lot of the times the hurricanes kind of miss Belize. They go up, you know, either towards Texas or towards Dominican. I know Fiona just went to Dominican and, and Haiti and I think Puerto Rico and then went up. So um, luckily we don't get them all that often, knock wood. But what I would highly recommend is if you're in a coastal property and you are buying a home or building a home, please do make sure that you are either building to hurricane standards or you have hurricane shutters if your windows aren't up to hurricane standards um, because it is a possibility. And you know, if you're gonna be spending all that money to build the home, you might as well spend a little bit more to make sure it's hurricane proof. W Paula saying, uh, wants to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, absolutely, Paul. feel free to reach out to me. Uh, R Jensen at Luna Realty Belize or the one they have there on the screen is actually good too. Info at lunarealtybelize.com. All right, Paul is saying, would you talk a little bit about the seasons, rainy seagrass, highs, low? Okay, so we talked about the high and low tourism seasons. I'll mention it again, I know because I talk a lot. So there's a lot of good information coming your way, but I'm gonna talk about it one more time. So the tourism season, low season is typically middle of May through middle of November. And then high season is the reverse of that, middle of November through middle of May. We have also what we call peak seasons and peak seasons is the holidays. So it's usually Christmas, uh, New Year's, spring break. We had a lot of tourism over spring break. 
and then Easter as well. And then we have the shoulder season. So June and July are what we call the shoulder season. So they're not quite low season, but they're not quite high season. It's when there are a lot of families that are bringing their kids down and they're coming down to, uh, to vacation and take that time to enjoy a summer break together. Um, the rainy season is typically August, September, October. That's when we see a lot of the rain. However, we have seen rain in January before, we've seen rain in November, but typically, typically according to history, and the rainy season has been over August, September, October. Uh, seagrass, I'm gl glad you brought up the seagrass. So sargasm is certainly something that has been hitting the Caribbean. If you're not familiar with the sargasm, it is essentially seagrass that comes up onto the shore and doesn't necessarily have the best smell when it is, uh, when it is decaying there. But a lot of times, especially here in Belize and the tourism spots, there is an effort to clean up the seagrass as it's coming in. A lot of the developments do tend to have people that are dedicated to just picking up the seagrass. Now, what I'm gonna say though, is you're not going to avoid it if you're on the beach. Um, you, you still will smell it at certain times. And I don't, we don't really have a seagrass, dedicated seagrass season previously. I'd say it was like March and you know, October, but it seems to kind of come and go whenever it wants. So, and there's not really a real answer to that, but what I would say for those of you who do not, maybe you're, you're affected by the seagrass, um, maybe it's not, you know, you, you can't stand it, allergies or something along those lines. Um, I would recommend looking at the lagoon sides or the west side of Amber Grisky because there's no seagrass over there. And then I would also recommend looking in the Cayo district, which is a more jungle so you can find river property there. So if you do wanna have that water element, you're able to be there without having that seagrass. So thank you, Paul, for bringing that up. Ernie's saying, what are the weather patterns? So, ooh, you know, I'd say it's hot. <laughs> it's tropical, it's certainly a tropical uh, year round. And so I'd say it depends where in the country you are, but you know, generally about 78 to 85 degrees year round. There is, a, a, there is humidity in the air, that's for sure. But December, January is when we see some cooler climates. You know, here on the island, we had you know, 65 degrees a couple of times in December and January, and everyone's all bundled up in parkas and, and freezing from it. But uh, otherwise, it is pretty consistent year round. <coughs> Excuse me. Paul is asking about pets. Um, so I just want to make a note here, folks, that it is on my end 707. I'm okay to continue going and answering questions here. I do want to be respectful of everyone's time, though. So um, if you do have to hop, I just wanted to give you a time notice there. But I'll keep going through the questions here as long as I still have my voice. So with that being said, for those of you who do have to hop, I really appreciate you being on. I mentioned you'll get a copy of the recording, so you can always tune into the rest of these questions after. All right, so Paula saying, can you bring your pets? Yes, I guess it depends on what pets you're talking about. If it's the usual cat and dog, yes, you are able to bring your pets into the country. Um, I can send you a list of what you need to do in order to bring them in, but you do need to register them with the group here called Baja, B-A-H-A, and you'll have to submit all the documentation to them. Then when you get to the airport, um, you'll check in with Baja, they're there at the airport and, uh, and whatnot. So yes, you certainly are able to. Kevin is saying, what about long-term rental prices in Key Cocker in order to experience Belize before purchasing? Uh, you know, it's gotten a little bit more expensive. I'd say that prices between Key Cocker and San Pedro are actually pretty similar. Although San Pedro is more developed, um, Key Cocker, I'd say, has increased in prices quite a bit. So I'd say it's still about, you know, 1200 1500 for a two-bedroom, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, but it really depends on what it is that you're, you're looking for. Uh, Paul saying, what are the best places to look for a winter rental? I would say any of those six places that I mentioned before would be great, but it really depends, Paul, on what, I'm going to just put that map, but what it is you like to do, you know, because what I may like to do is not necessarily what you like to do. I think it just depends really on what you're looking to accomplish. Personally, I like Ambergris Key as a place for people to explore because you can rent a golf cart here and, you know, you don't have to worry about having a, a car per se. Um, and, you know, it is easy enough to get on and off the island. You can take that water tax. You go right into Belize City so you can catch the buses if you prefer to catch a bus. But it just really depends on uh, what you're looking to accomplish. David is saying, is it legal for real estate agents to mark up price, mark up the seller's asking price and pocket the difference? Certainly not. No. So they should not be doing that. Um, but, you know, it's really not a regulated market here in Belize. And at, at, I would say, though, the seller unless the seller gives permission to the real estate agent to do that, most are not giving permission to the real estate agent to do that. At the end of the day, the seller is going to see the paperwork that has the purchase price on it. So if they did not authorize that purchase number, that purchase price number, they are going to know um, immediately. 
Paul is saying, how's the healthcare system? It's okay. You know, I'd say it's probably about a C plus. It certainly has a lot of room for improvement. There is talks about it doing a nice hotel, a hotel, a nice hospital here on the uh, on the island. Right now, we have clinics. Uh, there are some good hospitals, though, Belize Medical Associates, which is in Belize City, and then they have branches of that throughout the country. St. Luke's in Belmopan is also a very good hospital. Um, I know that we've had some clients who are going through uh, radiation, so they do have radiation centers throughout the country. But typically, if somebody has something a little bit more serious, they'll tend to go to Merida or uh, Chetamal in Mexico, or they'll go to Guatemala or end up going back to the state. So I think there is some room for improvement, but I do know that that is something that has been addressed. All right, Marcelo is saying, are people allowed to carry guns like in Texas and Oklahoma or tight rules on gun control like New York City? So in order to get a gun here, uh, it is a bit of a process. You get a gun license for a year. Typically, you know, business owners are allowed to get have a gun license, but otherwise it may be a bit of a challenge to get a gun license. Uh, if you do have a license for it, you can, it's a concealed carry permit. You're not allowed to go into some places with a gun on you, so just be aware of that. Um, but it is, I'd say, pretty tightly controlled. And like I mentioned, it's a, a year licensing and they do it on your birthday. So every year you'd have to go into Belize City specifically to a specific uh, police station there to get the licensing done. Marvin saying, since there's no MLS, how do you find properties for sale? Oh gosh, it's like a treasure hunt. I mean, uh, you know, for, for me even, and for a lot of folks, what they'll do is they'll just go to websites of each individual brokerage or real estate agent. And a lot of times they're not even updated. So that's a bit of a challenge too. So it'll show, you know, you found this dream property on one of the websites and then you inquire about it and like, sorry, we sold that one six months ago. So it is a bit of a challenge. I'd say the best thing to do is to work with a real estate agent uh, so that you are talking to somebody who is local in the market, who knows what's going on. All right, Paul saying he needs to go. So, all right, thank you. Thank you, Diane. Um, Paul saying, sorry for another Paul saying for the listing. Sorry, Paul, I don't know which, uh, what is the best place to look for a winter rental thing? So I just scroll up a little bit for listings. Uh, it depends where you are looking for. If you're looking on Amber Grisky, there's a place um, here called Belize It's Vacation Rentals. They're, they have some listings. Also, uh, Key Management, C-A-Y-E Management, they have listings. Otherwise, uh, feel free to let me know what you're interested in and I can check out the market for you. Chad is saying, do indigenous people have any type of plant medicine ceremonies? Uh, yes, they do. I haven't heard of any ayahuasca here. I don't know if that's specifically what you're referring to, but uh, I knew that they do have some plant ceremonies. And then Sherry is saying, what area is the best to live with for younger children, uh, with younger school aged kids for them to have others to play with? I would say Ambergris Key. Uh, here we have a lot of expat families. Some homeschool their children. Others end up sending them to the schools here. There's a really great one called Island Academy, which is where a lot of the expat children go. Otherwise, I'd say San Ignacio and that Cayo district is a good option for you. There you do have a lot of other families there too, and you have uh, some good schools there. Sacred Heart is pretty good. I don't know how old your kids are and if uh, you're going to homeschool them or send them into the school, but that would be my best recommendation for you. And then Marvin's saying, is tourism growing for the islands of Ambergris and Key Cocker? And yes, and I'm gonna pull up this for a second just to show a little bit more. Now, granted this chart on the left-hand side is only for year to date. So it goes through July over there, but you can see that San Pedro, um, Ambergris Key had about, I wouldn't say the same number because the, the bars are a little bit different there, but you can see there that it's higher, San Pedro's higher than Placencia, Cayo, Key Cocker, um, Belize City, I don't count that as a tourism destination per se. And then you can see though, when you compare the two that there is a lot of um, tourism happening in those those two areas specifically. You know, I think San Pedro and Key Cocker will always have visitors as long as the reef is maintained. I mentioned to you before that it's the longest living reef in the world. I think I tripped up over that a little bit, but it's the longest living reef in the world. It's the second largest in the world because the Great Barrier Reef is largest, but longest living is here in Belize. And so with the reef right out, like when I look out the window here, I could see the reef in the distance. It's a five minute ride with to get there by boat for divers and fishermen. And so there's that unique element that this island, that these two islands have here that the other parts of the country just simply don't. So I do think that they will continue to, to grow in popularity. And also the fact that it is a very family friendly, safe spot, you're encouraged to hop in a golf cart and go drive around town and check out the beaches and, and check out the different uh, restaurants and the local places. It's what you're encouraged to do. And I found here 
and, and believes generally that the people in the service industry are really nice and they like to talk to people. They like to get to know the people who are coming to visit. And so you do tend to find that we have a lot of repeat visitors coming to the country because they leave feeling like they've made friends. They've made friends with the bartenders or their tour guide. Next thing you know, they may be coming down to visit them again or, or inviting their tour guides to come up to the country, to their home country to visit them. I mean, there's this incredible relationship building that I just haven't seen in any other country um, that, I've, that I've been to. But I think that it's gonna continue to grow as, as long as the reef is well, main, well maintained. All right, folks. Well, I think we've gone through a lot of the questions here. Thank you all so much for staying on. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll get the, the recording over to you, the Zoom link for next week. If you would like to join, uh, please do register in advance so we know how many folks will be joining us and have a really fantastic evening. Thank you again and looking forward to being in touch with everyone. Bye-bye.